Hey guys, welcome back to Survival Records. And, uh, yeah, I'm picking back up where I left off. Uh, after having made the carriage for the sled to be parked into the sled park. And I've been getting a lot of good advice, uh, uh, tips and such and comments, and, uh, and I'm definitely going to implement some of them, uh, see exactly how they could work well here. Like, uh, one of the first things I'm going to do is change the speed of only some of these. So, like, this, uh, this stretch down the center here that are all extended. If I go in here and change the speed from 5, and you can scroll holding the control button, and say I go to 1 meter per second, or 0.1 meter per second, rather, and then this one I go to 2, three, four, five. What that'll end up doing is it'll make it so that by the time all of the rest of these have fully extended or fully retracted, the ones that are moving more slowly down the center here haven't finished moving yet, which will have the effect of at the end, both here and when it's fully extended, it'll slow it down to where near the end there it's only moving uh, one tenth of a meter per second. Slow enough that it'll actually, you know, not bump into this. Which will be great. And as far as uh, share inertial tensor goes, it, the way that I understand it to work is if you tell a single piston to share the inertial tensor. Uh, inertial tensor is when you... It, it's the... It's the artificial inertia that a grid has, right? So, so this the sled is a big ship. It uh, it will move a long while. It takes a lot of thruster to stop it from from drifting to to come to a complete stop, etc. Whereas you know a small little tiny grid doesn't have much inertia at all, and it'll uh, it'll it'll stop moving with less force, or it'll take less force to start it moving. So, the inertia, the inertial tensor for a static grid, like the base here, and this piece of this piston will be uh, maximum, or, or zero, maybe, if you think about it backwards. When you tell it to share Energy, the inertial no. tensor, what it does is it makes the piston head have the same amount of artificial mass as the piston base. And so by telling the piston head to share the inertial tensor as the piston base, you are making it so that the piston head is as heavy as the rest of the thing that the piston is attached to, the whole asteroid. So, what that ends up meaning is that it requires as much energy to move this piston head as it would take to move the rest of the base, minus the effects of the impulse here on the axis, right? So that's why sharing your inertial tensor stiffens up your pistons. Now, there are a lot of situations where you don't want the piston to be stiffened up. You want it to have the mass of what it's attached to to be exactly what, you know, what it is by itself. Here, though, I wanted to have this carriage to be as stable and solid as possible because I wanted it to slide the, the sled straight in and out of the cave here with no wiggle and no wobble whatsoever. But anyway, that's a bit of uh, talkiness that is more than uh, necessary to, uh, to entertain you right now. Uh, all right. 
where was I? I was going to re reassign some of the numbers on the speeds on all of these to get it so that the sled carriage moves in and out and slows down at the ends without me having to stop it myself. So let's get it into that, get these speeds reassessed, and yeah, I will, uh, I'll do that and we'll test it out. Well, dang, this thing is only shy by the power cells here. That's not bad. But I'm now worried that I may have run out of a piece uh, uh, a resource. Let's double check here. And I'm actively making these. I don't have silicon or the nickel. So let's double check silicon and nickel. Uh, here's my ingots. Plenty of silicon, but no nickel. Alright. Uh, I need to go get some nickel. I guess I could go scout with the... Esbelta. But I could also try and push the button here and head out with the sled. All right, so unlock and reverse speed and turn off inertial dampers. Now looking at the speed on the bottom corner, I'm 6.5 to 5.5, kind of bouncing back and forth as I go, means there's a little bit of oscillation within the heads of the ship. I suddenly slowed down and now I'm moving faster again. No, now I'm really slowed down at my maximum. Well, that would be this one here moving particularly slowly now. And these also moving slowly. And that's full speed there. But because that's still moving, it's letting this all bounce. feel I need to stiffen this up a little. Here's the problem, though, is if I stiffen it up more, then the connection between the piston and the piston head can snap. And I don't want that to happen. Yeah, if you, you look at it, all of this wiggle is happening between the piston head and the piston body. Let's try reversing it, because I mean, even there's, a, there's there's not a lot of move, not a lot of wiggle out here. But let's try reversing it now. So at maximum speed, I'm moving at. Just over six meters per second. And it is retracting. Those are moving at normal speed, then that one's gonna close, and then that one, and then that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Because each time one of these pistons closes all the way, it kind of adds a little bit of shake to the piston assembly. Which, I guess I can understand being... Uh, I don't know if I could kind of like the way it's working, but at least doing it this way, I don't have to be there personally fiddling with the inertia uh, stabilizers or not. Yeah. All right. Well, did I have any nickel asteroids? I don't think I did. Titanium, iron, gold. I should rename these to be asteroid first, then what the they're holding. Otherwise, I'm going to get these things lost. All right, well, I guess I have to go find some new asteroids. So let's head out with the Espelta and do some scouting. And let's go check things out. All right, pretty sure that that one has nickel in it. Probably silicon as well. But yeah, definitely nickel. Maybe, maybe something else. Let's head over there with the number two and double check what's what. So I'm on my way to this cluster of three large and one small asteroid. That's the one that I think has nickel in it. Uh, I'm like I'm realizing that these asteroids over here are closer, actually, to the sled park than uh, than where I was. So I should check all those on the way back. Top one first, I guess. Oh, there we go. Nickel and silicon, like I thought. How's that look in the shadows there? Oh, yeah, it's under. Oh, wait, no, there it is right there. Let's grab some nickel. <laughs> grabbing some stone at first as well. All right, let's uh, let's get a decent amount and then head back. So something's wrong here. I uh, <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm not emptying the drills. At least one of the drills. This one here is not emptying. Aha! Because that cargo container is busted. Hmm. Any of the others doing that? Oh, you know what it is? It's all of this... All the deformations that these take as they bang up against the sides, uh, they cause the blocks next to them to take damage. So... Yeah, that's not good. Um, I'm going to bring it back to the sled park and get it fixed up. And I think I have a solution for getting that problem fixed. Alright. Right back to the sled park and I'll see you there. I'm back. So... Let's connect up right here, unload most of my, oh, and there's a rebirth thrasher, all right. All right, I'm unloading most of the 
that, I am probably transferring almost all of that into the the base right away. Yeah, it's just a matter of getting this all fixed up. And it's up in here, right? Yeah. I'm probably going to go over the whole ship once with the, um, the regulation violator. And just to, you know, get anything in here that's sort of internal. But what my plan is, is actually to replace the tier 0 drills, or the tier 1 drills. I guess they must be tier 1 because that doesn't, yeah. Uh, replace it with tier 2 drills. So... Tier 2, uh, you know, I could even go... Let me see what it takes to make tier 4 drills. I was informed that the higher the tier of the drill, the larger of an area that it drills out. So, if I get tier 4 drills, and they drill out a much larger area, then they will drill out an area and allow me to avoid um, bumping into it as I as I do the drilling and it should save me some fuel and you know, make everything faster so let's go ahead and see what it takes to build up tier 4 drills on that okay that was really rude and they haven't, like, detected anybody. They haven't, like, they're not coming in at me yet. <sighs> yeah, creepy. Every time. Alright, looks like I need some metal plates to place this. So... Uh, well, 16 of them. I could probably put these away somewhere. Let's put those away somewhere first as well. Uh, don't need them in my inventory. There. Now let's go place some drills and see what we like about them. Uh, snag that color. As that's the black graphite. So I need to put one here. And I could probably put them there and there, but I might actually want to put the ore detector here. Because if I put the ore detector there, I can use the spectrometry, spectrometry to, uh, to detect forward. But and the, the, the openness that these would be... Uh, Wow, the words are failing me right now. The cavity that the tier 4 drills can drill is very likely to be sufficient, even with just the three. But I don't like how uneven that is. Uh, I'll just do... Hmm... Let me think about it. So, messing around with it a little bit, I have uh, turned it to manual, so uh, that's a way of disabling Izzy's controlling things here. Uh, and I'm noticing a couple things. One, I don't have the gold to finish off making these items. And two, these tier four motors need platinum. And... Yeah, I don't know that I have enough platinum. Oh no, I got 555 of it there. That, that, I shouldn't have any trouble with that. All right, but point being, it uh, it is um, going to take a while to get these constructed up. But speaking of things that are took, uh, taking a while to get constructed up, uh, here we go. We have a third jump drive and full batteries. So, 
I'm enjoying how things are working. I did have the one thought that on this, if I were to put thrusters on this piece here, on the carriage head here, left and right and up and down so that they could push in these directions and then these directions, that would conceivably allow it to stop itself using the thrusters to stop it from uh, from wiggling back and forth and up and down. Mm, might work well. M might work out. I, I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna uh, let those components craft up and then get them on the welder or on the, the, the number two. I was thinking of welding when I laid out these pieces at the end of the episode last time. I was thinking it might be nice to have uh, proper reactors on the base here. And I don't know for sure that I like this being how they're connected. Maybe I'll do something like that. Maybe I'll do something behind. Although, if I have a second story up top here, and that's where the elevator gets to, then, then that might be where they need it needs to be. Uh, I don't know. Choices. But... Uh, for now, let's just, uh, wait for this to happen. Well, I made a mistake. If you take a look at what I'm producing, I'm missing silicon as well. Which, uh, means I can't make these new drills at all. I'm gonna have to put on the old drills go get silicon, come back, uh, just to finish off these to make the new drills. I might, I might skimp out and just do, like, do two of the old drills. Yeah, just get these out of the way for now. Hey, all right, uh, da, da, da. I don't even have iron plates right now. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like now I'm out of another material. Uh, it's probably the cobalt. Let's go check really easily instead of having to type things. Yeah. Okay. But I ought to be able to weld up at least a couple of the tier four ones. So let's let's lay those down. Um. Hmm, maybe, maybe that could work. So, I'm wondering, like, how do I, how do I justify having it be a pointy arrow thing? I could put a connector on the front down here, have two of the tier fours on either side, and then up top be where I have the, uh, da, 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 this one. Or detector, that's what it's called. Let me give that a shot, because that way I can find things a lot more easily. It'd just be a matter of going in here, holding Alt, looking uh, getting in the cockpit, and looking up one of the screens that I set to be... Well, that's going to be a little bit annoying going back and forth. Maybe I can get a, a an LCD to be in front of the cockpit. I don't know. Um, I'll figure that out. Give me a minute. All right, let's uh, see how this works. Hmm, that was supposed to work. What am I missing? Uh, a bunch of that stuff. Why did it say it couldn't withdraw that stuff? Hmm. 
So I decided to put the um, tier 4 ore detector here, but I'm, I'm actually thinking maybe I ought to... Uh... Inventory full. Oh. That was a dumb uh, mistake. Inventory full. Okay. Let's, um... Sit here. We're locked. Izzy's should be sorting everything out through there. Now, if we sit here, we can easily see what's on that screen. Even if it does say that it's backwards? What? Hold on. Why did I put all those extra... I'm very confused. Why was it like this and backwards saying online mirror? Am I just blind? No, it's saying online as though it's being read from... Wait... It is not backwards, it is upside down. Ah, <sighs> okay. There we go. Okay, let's just get these things welded up. I really just want to get these welded up. Why? Why aren't they working? Come on. Okay, two. Go to my inventory. Hide my empty stuff. I like this, this one here. And we go to components. Got all of that stuff in this one. And we withdraw the components. Okay. I'm gonna have to go in there and like count how many of each thing I'm gonna have. Well, there we go. We got those welded up. Why? Okay. I'm just confused by this now, apparently. Let's let's put a uh, ore detector here. That is. Tier 3. Or Tier 2, or whatever this tier is. I need some metal plates. Let's do it. Let's get rid of those. There. Now maybe I can make these without needing to go out and get more of anything else. So all of this excess metal plate that I was making it was using up all of my cobalt. So once this is finished disassembling, I should be able to go back to the assembler, get rid of those, and make those up. Yeah. And then once I'm done with this, I'm going to go ahead and set it back to uh, not manual. So... Yeah, and there we go. I got my detector components. Now, I feel it looks a little silly with the connector and all these extra bars, but I feel like that's what I needed to do to get... Yeah, see, I that, that's red. That's what's holding up this. And it's what's the... this is holding up that. That is... Not quite holding... oh right, this is one on the other side. Alright, well, the number two has had a little bit of a makeover. Let's go find a cobalt asteroid. Oh, I made a slight modification to the uh, inventory on this one as well. Oh, here we go. 
It now accurately reads only what's inside of the container on this ship, on the regulations violator. So, uh, yeah, that's good. Now let's come in here. Let's get rid of manual and have it go ahead and automatically assemble or disassemble or whatever it needs to do. Oh, wait. There's one more thing I need to do before I have to go out and get more cobalt. Okay, here we go. Tiny little addition I welded on top of here. I think. Yes. Now, what do I have? I need to grab something else. I need to get my food, my chips. What did I have in here? Oh, yeah, apple pie, some mushroom soup. I have to eat away my worries. Because, as I noticed on the... There we go. And my food is draining. And I'm gaining organic. And I need two organic to start. So, let's eat an apple pie. Yummy. Uh, it's just hilarious that he, the, the mod maker, added this mechanic. That's just great. Okay, I have acquired the two organic that I need here. Now, this should be all it needs for the mushroom farm compost one to start crafting its first mushroom. Perfect. So from here, when that mushroom has been created, it will go through here where it has and set up to allow mushrooms. Oh, and I think I need to allow organic to go through as well. Yeah. Okay, so it'll allow the mushrooms and the organic to go through. But it doesn't let organic that's being used in a, in a thing currently be pulled. And, yep, I'm still working on that mushroom. So, once that has produced that first set of mushrooms, those mushrooms will get pulled through this sorter into the composter here. The composter will then turn it into organic compost. Uh, it'll turn the mushrooms into more organic. Here, we are allowing organic through and only organic through. So mushrooms cannot get pushed through. Only organic can get pushed through. It then is organic feeding all of these farms, but importantly, it can also go up through here. This sorter is only allowing... It's, it's in a blacklist mode, so it's preventing ice from going through, because... This chest here has a bunch of ice in it, and I want to have it always stocked with ice first, so it has special in its name. This sorter here only lets ice through, or lets ice through, but not back. So ice can go into the system, but not be pulled out of the system. Now, this sorter is allowing ice, gravel, and organic to get through. So when the mushroom is finished. So 32% there. We're going to see it, hopefully, automatically get pulled into the composter here. And then that organic will automatically get pulled through back into these 
because they are set on repeat mode. See, so they will always try and make that again. Cool. Uh, let's see if it starts working. All right, here we go. The mushrooms should finish off in a few seconds. Yep, and then they went into the end. Oh. And here they are. And the organic is getting pulled out as soon as it's being made. And... It is being added to the mushroom farm. Number four, for some reason. And so... Basically what this is, I'm converting ice and gravel into more organic right now. All right. And by the time that hits 10, that should hit two. Yep. And now it's gonna be starting to get pulled someplace else. Let's check the production. Oh, it's getting into inventory of farm one. Yeah, there we go. All right. Hey, it's working, guys. Pretty soon here, I'm just going to be producing organic all the time. Ah, oh, that's great. And then that is nearly gone, and that is nearly full. And now farm number one is producing again, and farm number four, for some reason, is the one that produced. Uh, although I gotta enable repeat mode on it. Enable repeat mode. A lot of these I ended up having to... Uh, the, the, the Izzy's, because it's... Yeah. In paren inside of quotation marks, with an exclamation point, lowercase manual is specifically what it needs to be. There's that. And... There, and there. Alright. Now, I can go off and do other things. Let's give the new number two a, uh, a, a, a go. See how it, see how it works for me. And let's get a refill on the hydrogen. Refill on the oxygen while I'm at it, though I doubt that that's anywhere close to being done. All right. Now, unfortunately, I cannot turn off or, or completely remove that display. Give me a give me a minute to set the display up because I'm going to see if I can get it to work properly. So I'm actually liking this pretty well, <laughs> except the very annoying part that I apparently put the drills in upside down. I'm gonna want to fix that at some point. Um, but I think this might have gold. I mean, it's at least it's got spikes at all the spots that gold has spikes. So, uh, I guess we'll see when I get there. Uh, it's just silver and silicon. 
Oh well. I'll mark it down and keep looking. Uh, no. No, probably not. Stone. Ice. And maybe magnesium. Well, that one looks more promising than anything I've seen so far. It at least has spikes at the two places it should in the back. Yeah, right. let's see what happens when I get closer. I don't know if it's wishful thinking or not, but that asteroid looks like it's got some yellowy stuff on it. Hey, hey, hey. it wasn't just wishful thinking. Although, man, that gold is really buried in there. Let's, uh, swing around here, maybe? Alright, tell you what, you've seen me mine away at things plenty of times before. I'm going to get this gold. I'm then going to bring the gold to the sled park, which is... where the heck is it? Way over there. 28 kilometers away. Okay, uh, yeah. And, uh, and then I'm gonna get those jump drives built up, and I'm going to go to the... this place over here. The station on the moon, and I'm gonna see about getting down and buying some vegetables. Alright, so, uh, let's... Oh, wait. Uh, I want to block tools, these guys. Ooh, that's quite a uh, tunnel that these things are going to be making now. Nice. Alright, I will uh, see you there. And away we go. Okay. Well, I can see a little bit of what must be the station down there. Probably. Yeah, there we go. Alright, about 13 kilometers away. Let's straighten up like this. Alright, now let's get into the Espelta. That door opens the wrong way. Ah. I want to be able to run through it, I guess, though I could probably run through it the other direction, it would be fine. And... Alright, I guess I really don't know much of anything about this uh, station or this moon, so... GPS, the slit park. Let's go. Given the size of the mountains and the circumference of the moon here, I'm guessing it's probably not a very big moon. Uh, I already hit gravity. I'm at 9,000 meters. There's a bit of a hazy fuzz. I'm going to guess that there's a atmosphere. Uh, 
seeing any output from my atmospheric thrusters, though. But uh, I'm also only at 0 0.09 gravity. Let's keep going. Uh, and we'll see what we can figure out. Oh, close enough to get the beacon now. One fifth of a gravity, or one fifteenth gravity. I forgot to refill my tanks before I came down here. All right, well, uh, considering. I might be considered in freefall. I'm going to turn on my dampeners again. See about arresting my momentum. Yeah, I'm slowing down fine. Boy, you know what? I never got this thing set up for atmospheric flight. Or, or um, in gravity, well, flight. My atmospheric thrusters are working again. I'm in the safe zone. Let's take a spot on their little landing pad there. Although there's really not much room. Ah, here we go. Uh, you know what? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and just land get my nose in. Now, let's see what this place has to offer. Contracts. And the store. Right. You know what? I feel like the contents of the store are probably dictated by the content uh, by, by the mod load order as well. So let me change the load order quick. All right. So I do want to have uh, Lord Waiter's tiered systems be in there. Um, maybe, maybe if I push it down like this, so that it's underneath Plant and Cook. That way, Plant and Cook can put things in, and then Lord, ah, we'll see. Let's uh, let's load it like that. And load back into the game. Okay. Loading back in. And hey, hey, there we go. An apple. And some herbs. Which, I mean, that that is like... 
there we go. Uh, and importantly, the uh, Mark II Gatling ammo, the legendary motor. Wow, 16 million for one of these legendary motors. That's insane. All right, well, you know what? Let's let's get an apple. Uh, let's buy two apples. Fine, fine, we'll buy buy four apples. And let's buy a bunch of herbs. And frustratingly, there are no um other things but there are data pads so i don't have a ton left and i never made much i never did bothered making money i never made money but what i did do was make uh make some collected some prior to prior to resetting that's why i gave myself that much money but 37 that's about right um let's buy four of them no never mind press the wrong button uh looks like we're gonna buy three of them all right where are these the roma station the Mepper station. And last but not least, the RSLR station. Alright. Well, why don't we get back into space? And figure out where those stations are. Yeah, no, no trouble with thrust. Uh, There's not even a full half gravity here. So, two of the new stations are over there on the I on on top of the planet there, the gas giant. Uh, I don't, I'm not digging it. However, there was one more that was 9,000 kilometers that way. So, let's take a short little jump over this way and see what that, uh, see what, what lies behind the moon here, what that new station over there is. doesn't look like there's any planets or anything over there. Interesting. Let's check which one of those is it. It's the new Roma station. Jump Jump drive. Let's try going to the new Roma station. Alright, guys. Uh, away we go. Oh, I didn't go all the way. <laughs> well, uh, I still, I, I thought maybe I had m increased my maximum jump distance to be more than that. But apparently my max jump distance is still only about 5,000 kilometers. Oh, you bet. All right. Well, you know what, folks? I think this is probably as good a place to end the episode for today. Uh, it's been fun playing with you. I uh, will see you next time on Survival Records. And until then, 
Thanks for watching.